one artist who, despite his very short career, after all, he dies at about 27 years old, very much like Masaccio of the early Renaissance, will find himself predominantly featured in most histories of modern art is going to be Jean-Michel Bisquet. Now, he starts out life basically rebelling against his parents and rebelling against society. Starting at age 17, he lives, leaves home, starts this idea of Samo. And these are going to be these witty bits of graffiti, treating Samo as if it's some new medication. After all, drug advertising is a new thing at this time. And he develops a following. People will actually travel around New York to see the latest Samo art. And of course, he's not making money doing this for the most part, at least not initially, because it's graffiti art and that comes with its own issues. And here we come into that issue of is it graffiti? Is it art? Is it street art? We'll get into some of that more later on. As he continues, he starts developing this very expressionist style. He's going to be known for developing these what are seen as very primitive images. And he's known as an outsider, basically an outsider artist, who dealers may or may not be taking advantage of throughout his very short career. They, there are stories of dealers coming in, bringing him drugs so that he would stay up all night, create a painting for them, and take it away in the morning. He's the ultimate outsider, and in the 80s, this is what people were looking for. They were looking for someone who had come from outside the art scene, supposedly uneducated in the arts. And I say supposedly because, in fact, his art shows that he's familiar with artists such as Picasso, and Jean de Buffet. So we're seeing these influences of art history in his work, even though he's regarded as an outsider artist. Now, the piece we're looking at is horn players, and this is a fairly large triptych, so three panels put together. And we're seeing this again in this sort of primitive looking style but when you tear it apart if you were to look at it compositionally it all makes sense everything comes together it shows an understanding of art of art history here the use of typography or letters in art very similar to what we see from the cubis and other forms although he's using it a little more extensively now in this case, he is trying to memorialize the legendary jazz musicians Charlie Bird Parker and Dizzy Gillespie, who he memorializes in this painting. The fractured figures, the bold colors against a black background, and the deliberate scrawled, crossed out, and misspelled graffiti, in this case, ornithology, referring to both a nickname for Parker and the title of one of Parker's musical compositions create this very dynamic composition. As we get closer, we see that this is really a tribute to these two men, but also looking at the fact that oftentimes African American artists, musicians, composers, etc., are going to be removed from the history of art or music or other fields. And so we see those crossing out, those elements crossed out. We see some of it possibly trying to give off this primitive aspect. Now, where else have we seen this? Well, we've seen this primitivism in the works of Paul Clay, the surrealist. We've seen similar ideas where it looks very primitive, even though it's heavily studied from Duchamp and Picasso with their works, where they may have hundreds or entire books of studies for a single work, but it looks very spontaneous. I'm thinking of uh, the bride stripped by her bachelors or the work of Picasso in Demoiselle de Avion. So we have very similar ideas here. And in fact, when you look at this, it's a very complicated image. We see the figures. We're seeing the thought process that's going into it. We're really seeing the subconscious process or maybe the unconscious process of his artistic process laid out on the canvas. 
all while developing this memorial, this focus on these two great jazz musicians that he believes people need to focus on, much like Picasso believes people need to focus on the horrors and atrocities of Guernica. So none of this is a new idea. How it's laid out is the new idea, and the fact that it's being done by a so-called outsider artist is going to draw the public's attention to Biscay up to the point of his death in 1988.